Sam Giancana's mob empire began in Chicago and spread west to Las Vegas and Hollywood. According to the new Giancana biography, the stars of the entertainment world became an important part of his galaxy. Frank Sinatra is one of the most famous Hollywood stars named in the book Double Cross as having associations with mobster Sam Mooney Giancana. Giancana's nephew says his uncle and Sinatra were close friends. It was a close relationship. He had a lot of respect for Frank Sinatra, that he was a very talented man, uh, that he was good at what he, what he did, and uh, he was a little different. He was a classier guy than many of the other celebrities. That report is confirmed by veteran columnist Irv Kupsinet, whose years of reporting covered the Giancana era in Chicago. Frank had some, uh, somewhat of an admiration for, for Sam. And whenever Frank came to Chicago, he would always pause first to make a visit to Sam Giacomo and pay his tribute there. But later in life, I think Frank realized it was a mistake and he tried to get rid of that hoodlum association. The book claims Sinatra remained involved and makes the daring accusation that Sinatra was used by Giancana, perhaps unwittingly, to try and get blackmail information on John F. Kennedy. What Mooney told my father is that he um, utilized Frank Sinatra in a capacity of, of trying to find the right kind of women for various people. And in this particular situation with JFK, uh, to try to get them in a compromising position. Sinatra introduced Judith Campbell to Kennedy. According to the book, she became Kennedy's and Giancana's lover. The book claims she and other women became couriers between the president and the mob boss. There was some agreement, and JFK started to pass confidential FBI documents through Judith Campbell, uh, through Marilyn Monroe, as well as through Angie Dickinson, but those documents were a carefully selected sample of FBI memorandums that were not important. Kennedy supposedly used them to placate Giancana and keep him at bay. Judith Campbell has stated previously that she was a courier between the two men, though she's not commenting on Double Cross. Neither are Sinatra or any of the others mentioned in the book. Sinatra played singer-comedian Joey Lewis in the movie version of Lewis's Life. Lewis is also part of Double Cross. These 1949 home movies of Chuck Giancana's wedding, a wedding paid for by Brother Sam, show Lewis performing for the Giancanas. Ironically, Lewis was nearly killed by Sam Giancana and other mobsters back in 1927 when he wouldn't perform at a mob-owned nightclub. They beat him up, uh, they cut his tongue, and they cut his throat basically from ear to ear. Uh, he didn't die, obviously. And suddenly, in 1949, here is this man who is singing for Mooney once again. And the irony that, that Mooney had such power that here is a man who was almost, almost died at his hand is now singing at his brother's wedding. The book paints a picture of the mob intimately involved in Hollywood and its stars. Former Hollywood reporter James Bacon doesn't think Giancana and the mob owned Hollywood, but they did own Las Vegas, which was filled with Hollywood stars. The Mafia controlled Vegas and when it first got going. And uh, Sinatra was a performer up there. Milton Burrow was a performer. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, they're all performers. The mob guys signed their paychecks. Mooney Giancana thought Hollywood stars could simply be bought and sold. He always felt like uh, they were puppets on a string for him, and he could use them whenever he felt like being entertained. In the book, Mooney says to his brother, quote, Hollywood is just full of guys waiting to be used. We help them along and we own them. They're all worthless bums and whores. Hollywood is the only place I've ever been besides Washington, D.C., where everybody, men and women, are just begging for you to use them, end quote.